Hey everyone, last week the Federal Reserve met and, no surprise, they held rates flat. But many of the issues I've spoken about over the last few weeks did come up in the press conference, and the responses provided by Chairman Powell suggest issues I've highlighted are being considered by the Federal Reserve. I'm guessing Chairman Powell watches my videos every week. Maybe not. The Fed appears much more focused on the employment market and the risks of rising unemployment. As they reiterated in the press conference several times, they're now balancing both sides of their dual mandate rather than focusing on just inflation. And their comments regarding softening housing inflation reiterated my video on owner's equivalent rent. So while the Fed didn't cut rates last week, the tone of Chairman Powell's comments suggest a rate cut in September is likely. That assumes, of course, we don't see any significant economic curveballs in the next 45 days. Following the press conference, Wall Street was betting heavily on a 25 basis point rate cut in September. But the unemployment rate surge to 4.3% that came out on Friday pretty much locked that rate cut in. In fact, it pushed the predicted September cut up to 50 basis points and assigning a greater than 90% likelihood that the overnight rate will be 4.5% or lower by year end basically down by 75 to 125 basis points. By the sound of things, inflation is making solid headway toward the Fed's goal while the economy looks like it will remain sound. But the trend that really caught my attention last week is the 10-year treasury. The 10-year has fallen to the 3.8% range, its lowest level since December last year, largely based on speculation that the interest rate climate will loosen on a go-forward basis. And as the 10-year demonstrates a credible declining trend, the news for investors gets better and better. Not only is the underlying rate retreating, but lenders are also adjusting. They've already started to tighten their spreads, putting additional downward pressure on commercial real estate lending rates. When there was a lot of uncertainty about what the Fed would do, lenders opened their spreads to about 300 basis points. That pushed borrowing rates well into the 7 to 8% range, depending on the property type, its location, the borrower profile, etc. Today, lender spreads have come back down to the 200 basis point range or even lower. That has tightened the cost of capital for some properties and locations back down to the mid 5% range. That's a big shift with some serious benefits. First, it takes some of the heat off investors who may have debt coming due, whether because a loan is maturing or their rate cap may be expiring. Second, as rates come down, it could help alleviate some of the expectation gap between buyers and sellers that has slowed the transaction market. Yes, we could still see a curveball. If the economy were to weaken more than expected and we fell into a significant recession, one severe enough to erode property fundamentals, that would be a problem. Or if inflation were to reassert sufficiently to cause the Federal Reserve to reverse course, which has happened before. But in general, it looks like the soft landing has a good chance of sticking, and that would be very good news for investors. A soft landing would help sustain property fundamentals while the cost of debt financing comes down, and that could bolster the commercial real estate investment climate. Over the next 45 days or so, until the next Fed meeting, investors should keep tabs on the unemployment rate, the job creation numbers, and of course, all of the inflation readings. Those will provide additional insights into the Federal Reserve outlook. That said, regardless of the short-term trends, the long-term outlook remains positive. And that's what counts most for commercial real estate investors. That's why we always keep our eyes on the horizon.